You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy-to-implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis, from Bright Futures Counseling. Calling all new school counselors. If you're an intern, just graduated, or recently hired, this is for you. I have a brand new free training series for you called New School Counselor Boot Camp. In this five-part training, we'll be covering how to make the most of your internship, rocking the interview process, how to prepare your office, setting up for a successful and stress-free school year, and your first 30, 60, and 90-day to-do list. Summer is the perfect time to get started, so go to stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash bootcamp to sign up. Hey listeners, let me let you in on a little secret. You don't have to stress about planning your class lessons, small groups, and individual sessions anymore. My school counseling membership program, Impact, is here to help. So, what do Impact members get? Monthly curriculum plans across all three tiers, SEL lessons, small groups, individual, and seasonal activities, step-by-step video implementation guides, bi-weekly Zoom coaching calls with me, and exclusive Facebook group community. This membership is designed for school counselors who want to deliver the best possible content to their students, but who also want to just press the easy button. You'll get access to monthly curriculum plans, resources, support, and community so you can deliver quality, engaging, life-changing counseling lessons to your kiddos. So what do you think? Are you ready to make an impact? Join today at stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact. Hey there, thanks for listening to another episode of the School Counseling Simplified Podcast. So before we dive into today's episode, I want to say thank you so much for listening and thank you to those of you who have been leaving podcast reviews. I so appreciate it. Um, I mentioned a couple weeks ago when you leave a review, it makes the podcast easier for other school counselors to find, which is the goal. We want to help as many counselors in turn helping as many students as possible. So I want to highlight a review today. Um, This is from Maddie. She said, five stars, love it. This is such a bright spot in my commute. I love that I can listen on my way to work and implement the ideas once I get there. I have a big school counseling brain dump notepad in my desk, and I almost always have something to add to it after I listen to an episode. I love that. I love the idea of a good brain dump, Maddie. Thank you so much for the nice review. And I love that you're listening to it on your commute and then implementing the strategies right away. So that is my goal with the podcast. I want you to have like a simple, easy takeaway that you can implement right away. So thanks again for the reviews, y'all. I so appreciate you. Now, remember this month we're talking about strategies you can use to reach as many kids as possible while advocating for your role as a school counselor. So the first week we talked about a scheduling tool, then last week we talked about an organization hack, and this week I wanna talk to you about data collection. And I specifically wanna do a deep dive on my end of the year report. Now, last week I mentioned it briefly, but I really wanna go in depth here. Um, And I was going to sit down to record this and I was like, wait a minute, why reinvent the wheel because i just did a training on this a live training that you may have attended on how to use an end of the year report and i really broke it down step by step so i am reusing the audio from that training so i did this training last month um, but i'm going to i have the audio extracted from it to feature for you here so you may hear me kind of like interacting with the viewers and stuff it might sound a little funny but the core content was so good i don't think i could recreate it any better so i just thought i'm going to share it with you here um, so i'm about to play that and stick around until the end so i can let you know the freebie i have for you regarding data collection okay see you there so let's dive in so how to use counseling data first the ins and outs of my favorite data tracking tool which is an end of the year report so i have talked about this before on my blog and on the podcast a little but i cannot wait to do a deep dive of this with you here and it's great timing because as we're wrapping up april going into may i know go ahead and comment if you are you getting out of school in may or in june this year Um, I would love to know when I lived, I grew up in Georgia and school ended in May and then it was June when I was working in California. So, okay, I'm seeing a good mix here. It looks like a split, but that's why I wanted to talk about this now because you can start preparing at the end of April and have it all ready to go in May or even June. If you're in June, someone said end of June. Wow. Yeah. I know some people started late 
because of COVID this year. So what is an end of the year report? Well, it's very simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a report that you're creating at the end of the year to show how many students you've served, how many class lessons you taught, and even how much time you spent with students. So those are some main ideas, but you can basically include anything you want in here. So here are some must-have stats that you don't want to miss. The number of students that you've served. So these are students that you're seeing in your counseling sessions. So you can break these down into individual and small group. How, many how much time you're spending with the students. So this is an average minutes per session and over how many weeks. So for example, if you're seeing a small group for one hour a week for eight weeks, then you're seeing that number of students for eight hours of direct services. Your class guidance lessons or SEL lessons, which topics you're covering and how frequently you taught them. Any character ed, school-wide activities that you hosted or implemented, or maybe you did like a career fair or something like that. Um, any professional development, conferences, or trainings that you presented at or attended. And I even like to include the meetings that you've attended. How many hours you're spending in those IEP, SST meetings, um, anything like that. That's a great tool that you want to track as well. And your sources. So you're saying, where am I finding this data? Well, you can use student self-assessments, like I showed you earlier in our five-minute self-assessment. Teacher parent feedback, observations pre and post group surveys, and through progress monitoring scales. So let's take a look at what the end of the year report looks like in action. So I have it here. Um, so basically on your first page, this is where you wanna showcase your program. So this one's pretty professional and basic looking, but you can add a lot of photos. I encourage you to use your school colors, maybe include your school mascot. Um, I was a bee one year and I had a cute little bee on there. So whatever speaks to you and your program, if you're elementary, you could make it a little more whimsical, maybe high school is a little more streamlined and professional, whatever speaks to you and your style, um, get creative. But basically in the beginning paragraph there, you're just saying um, who you are, the purpose of this report and how it's aligned with your school's mission statement. Then I like to have a box that says school at a glance and you can include your school's website and then the grade levels, the enrollment numbers, the school year principal name and your name as the counselor or maybe if you're on a team of counselors. Um, I like to include a photo of the school and then this bottom part, so this is counseling by the numbers and this information is found elsewhere in the report as well but it's just kind of a fun way to display some bold numbers right off the bat. So whoever's viewing this report, the first page just really draws them in um, and they're impressed by the services you're providing. So maybe you have the number of students that you've seen individually, the number of groups that you've implemented, um, a number of meetings there. Maybe it's a percentage of teachers that found your lessons effective. You can just pick some fun numbers to highlight right there. And then, as you can see on the second page, you're going to dive right into the stats. So I have here individual counseling and group counseling. And you can write a paragraph or two about um, how you select students for these services and kind of what the goal is for the services. And then you want to have in there the number of students that you're seeing, um, the average number of sessions, the average time spent in the session. And I even like to calculate the percentage of students that you're seeing who um, are in that type of service. So for example, if you have, you know, 100%, if you're looking at individual and group counseling, if six out of 10 kids you see in a group, then 60% of your caseload is in group counseling and 40% in individual. So that's just kind of interesting um, information to share. And then same thing with the groups there, the number of groups, um, how many students you're serving through small groups. I also like to include referral data. So you can use all of those referral forms that you've collected throughout the year and break it down and see where your referrals are coming from. So how many are parent referrals? How many are teacher referrals? How many are student self referrals? Then you can talk about your class guidance lessons, SEL lessons, whatever you call them. Um, so you've been going into every classroom every month and teaching these awesome character education lessons. So you can talk about how you've selected the topics that you were teaching. Maybe you were using a book. One year I used um, a children's book, Inch and Miles, and focused our character words on that. Maybe you're following Second Step, or maybe you're following Character Counts. There's a lot of different curriculums out there. Maybe you're creating your own. 
Either way, you want to talk about what your program has looked like, and then I like to go through each month and say which topic was covered when. And this is information you may think, well, the teachers know because I've been doing it, my principal knows, but you would be surprised, especially your admin and principals. They have so many things going on and so many people to manage that they might kind of forget about you. So this is a great way for you to speak up and really show the impact that you're having. Then I like to include professional development. So this is where you can write down any trainings that you've attended or conferences, any kind of professional development to show that you're continually improving and learning. And then this is just a visual um, of the groups. So I personally like to look at things in a table or in a visual way. So it's that same data from earlier, but I just have the group name, topic, grade level, the number of sessions, the time spent, and the number of students. So that's kind of a cool way to show all the groups that you have. And then any additional services provided. So perhaps you did like some things that come to mind for me are like bullying prevention month. I did like a fun run um, to raise awareness or I worked with fifth grade student ambassadors on some volunteer projects or any kind of um, like a drug prevention week. Anything like that you can mention here because you want to showcase not only are you just doing your providing services in your three tiers of class lessons, small groups and individual counseling, but you're also doing this other stuff above and beyond. Um, so anything maybe like a career fair that you organized, something like that. And then meetings. So this part is a little depressing to kind of do the math because I went back and looked at my Google Calendar um, of all the meetings that I had attended, or maybe you have them in email. And now that you know going forward, if you're going to do these reports every year, you can kind of think ahead and collect this data throughout the year so it's easier to find. Because I know the first year I was kind of scrambling to find the info. But for example, in the next school year, if you know you're going to do one of these again, all school year long, you can kind of like star an email or get a little organized on your calendar so it's easy to find the info for next year. But anyways, the meetings, yeah, it's a little depressing to see exactly how many hours you're spending in meetings, but it's good information to know because this way when we, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but when it comes to advocating for your position, you want to be able to communicate how much of your day is spent in not direct services, unfortunately. So although these meetings are important, it's just nice to know the numbers and be able to communicate them. Um, and then finally, you can add those graphs. So anything data that you have, you can present in a pretty way. You could do this yourself using like an Excel table, um, but Google Forms makes it super simple. So if you're already collecting data on Google Forms, all you have to do is click that results tab and you can see it in graph form, take screenshots and throw them in there. So work smarter, not harder. So this is, and again, if you stick around with me until the end, you will get this for free, an editable version. So you can change as much or as little as you like to meet your needs. Um, but I've seen some really beautiful end of the year reports and it's just such a game changer. So some tips that you wanna keep in mind when you're creating an end of the year report is you want to include data from services provided and you wanna include student progress data. So think of services provided and student progress. Um, so for services provided, that's the actual hours that you're spending providing counseling services to students. So think about the lessons that you're teaching, the groups that you're leading, the number of students you're seeing individual. Then for student progress data, this is where you're showing how students have changed since they started your services. So this is where like a self-assessment would be a perfect place to fit this in because you're showing the progress that you had. Both are equally important. Um, the first metric is showing that your, you know, that your position is valued and you're spending a lot of your time wisely and helping as many students as possible. Whereas the second metric is showing, okay, you're seeing a lot of kids, but who cares if they're not improving? So the second metric is showing exactly how much they're improving. And why should you do this? It seems like a lot of work and it's not mandatory, right? Well, it's actually not a lot of work if you use the template that I'm going to give you. Um, but it's a great way to reflect on your program's progress and to feel proud of all of your hard work. So you are doing so many awesome things as a counselor. And unfortunately, a lot of times it goes unnoticed. So like I said, your principal maybe has, you know, her hands in a lot of different things and she doesn't really know what's going on. Or this is even something you could showcase on your school website to communicate with parents and teachers the services that you're providing. 
Um, but reasons why you can do this is to interpret the data to modify your program, showcase the data to advocate for your role, and to communicate your program's effectiveness. So this is especially important during this crazy school year. So the 2021 school year, you know, was unlike any other coming back from the pandemic. A lot of people were virtual, a lot of people were hybrid. Um, and I know you were probably working harder and more creatively than ever before. But especially if you were virtual, maybe people weren't seeing you as much. Like when you're on campus, people can see you physically, what you're doing, and they kind of know what you're up to. But if you were virtual, they might not have seen you for a while and they might be curious. So this is a great way to remind people of the huge impact that you were having. Okay, so your turn. I want to hear from you. Jump into the comments and share with me one idea of data that you could include on your end of the year report. So what's something that you would like to include? So let's see, parent contact. Oh, that's an excellent one, Dorian. Yes, parent contact is great. Um, I didn't even have that in there. Home visits, Beth said home visits as well. Attendance, yes, I meant to mention that one. Attendance is huge, especially if you've helped your school's attendance improve based on your programs. You definitely don't want to miss that. Risk assessments, the number of class counseling lessons, Oh, number of behavior infractions after a small group. Yes, Crystal, that's excellent data to have to see how their behavior infractions have gone down after your group. Crisis, bully threat assessments, at risk. GPA, oh, that's excellent, Hannah. Good idea. Crisis, CPS reports, all the extra work you do to see where your time goes. Mm -hmm, absolutely, Gina, I agree. That's, it's really interesting. Whenever I do these, I'm always kind of shocked, like, oh, wow. Filling in for absences. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. New stu student orientations, risk assessments. These are all excellent ideas. Super great. Presenting at PTO meetings, topics of session discussions. Can you please send us a list of these ideas? Yes, Kathy, that's, yes, I absolutely can. So I have some listed and then I can add these as well. And maybe we can send these all out um, to you guys in an email. That's a good idea. STH. Barbara, what is STH? I don't think I know what that is. Self-care club, behavior support, time spent on non-counseling tasks. Yes, Alexandria, that's going to be huge when it comes to advocating for your role. That's a great idea to track your time and to show where it is. Mm -hmm. um, would you include staff support offered? Yes, Emily, I'm glad you brought that up. So staff support, if you're working with a teacher, perhaps on like a behavior plan and you're not directly working with the student, but you're kind of teaching the teacher how to do something, I would definitely include that, as well as any parent education workshops you're doing as well. Um, will you be linking the slides from this presentation? I haven't been writing down everything. Um, yes, so I believe we can do that as well. Good idea, Jennifer. Um, time used in duties like crosswalk, yes. So unfortunately we get stuck with a lot of duty time and we wanna be able to communicate that when it comes to advocating for our role as well. Do you have a format for collecting all of this data? Yes, so I do, Kathy, that's a good question as well. I have an, a blog post on how to use an end of the year report and then it links to a blog post like, well, how am I supposed to collect all the data? So maybe we can link to that one in the comments here um, or I can go in and add it later for you guys. Okay, thank you, these are awesome ideas. So creating an end of the year report allows you to know exactly what your program needs and it increases the value for your position, which makes you feel prepared and confident to best serve your students. So that's our first one, so let's move right along to number two, which is how to interpret this data to improve your program. And how we can do that is by analyzing our end of the year report. So we're going to look at the numbers and figure out what was working and what was not working. So by collecting this data and tracking it, we can see what's working well and what's not. And you may be thinking like, well, what's not working, that's, you know, I don't wanna see that because I feel like I failed or like I did something wrong. But the true failure would be to not track it at all and to continue to do something that's not working. So by seeing what's not working, you can modify to best serve all students and to best fit student needs. So just because something's not working doesn't mean that you're a bad counselor, or you're doing something wrong, maybe we just need to switch our strategy. So you're thinking, okay, well I have all this data, now what? So first, if your data shows that the student has improved, 
celebrate because that is awesome. But then you can transition them to a lower tier of intervention. So you may remember we have our pyramid, our three tiers of intervention here. So we have um, level one, which is that class instruction that all students are receiving. Then we have level two, which is small groups. So that's more intensive for students who need more support. And then we have the third tier, which is our most extreme or most intensive individual one-on-one -on -one counseling. So let's say we have a student that we're seeing in a level three intervention. So we're seeing them, I'll use the same example as earlier, anger management, the students having a lot of anger issues. So we're seeing them once a week for eight weeks, we do self-assessments and based on our self-assessment data, we see that the student now can name coping strategies to use and we've talked, we did a teacher survey and a parent survey and both have indicated that the student was using about um, the strategies about half of the time and it was working, but they were only doing them about half of the time. Well, I would say that's an improvement. They went from no strategies to using them half the time. So that's awesome. Celebrate with the student, let them know how proud you are but then you can transition them to a lower tier. So perhaps they're not ready just for zero counseling, but maybe they can move down to a group and then they're one of five kids who are working on anger, something like that. And then um, on the contrary, if they have not improved, reevaluate. So maybe you can refer them to an outside agency. So perhaps you've been seeing them in the level three intervention and just nothing's working and you feel like maybe it's a bigger issue that maybe they could use um, some outside counseling to help so you can make a referral to the parents um, you know remember you're not a therapist you are here to analyze it, your data to see how you can best serve them to be successful in a school setting and if you feel that you're not equipped to do so then you can refer them out and that is okay then you can help a student that you can help. You only have a limited amount of time. So you wanna make sure that you are choosing wisely on what to do here. And how we know if we're making a wise choice is by looking at the data. Now, perhaps um, you just need to move them up a tier. So maybe they're in a small group and you do the self-assessments and you get parent-teacher feedback and you see that they learned some things from the group, but you think the group, maybe they weren't a good fit for the group, they need something a little more intensive, then you can move them up a tier. Um, and see them individually. Or maybe you need to refine your curriculum. Maybe you see a trend that multiple students aren't benefiting from and you're using kind of the same activities and you're like, well, maybe that's the problem. So refine the curriculum and then redo the assessments and see what happens. So tell me in the comments, how do you think an end of the year report would best help you? So number one, determine when to end services. So maybe now you're just doing ongoing services and you're not really sure when to stop. Uh, number two, figure out which groups to lead. So maybe you want to do small groups and you have some referral data, but you're not really sure who belongs where. Or number three, know when to refer to an outside agency. So maybe you are like, I'm not sure when I'm supposed to do that. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of ones, three, Two is a good mix of everything here. One, two, and three, Kathy, yeah. Three and two, one and two, yeah, definitely a combination. It can help you in all of these ways. And finally, our third point here is how to showcase this data to advocate for your position. So this is the most fun to me because this is where you get to brag on yourself a little bit because you are awesome and this is where you get to display your amazing results. So this is how you can advocate for your position and help you get the recognition that you deserve. So an end of the year report is the ultimate self-advocating tool. So this is where you get to brag on yourself and show the need for your program. So like I mentioned before, a lot of times people don't really know, unfortunately, what the role of the counselor is. So what better way to communicate the need for your role and how big of an impact you're making than by using an end of the year report? So first, again, we talked about services provided and student progress. Remember those two areas. So communicating your services provided, be sure to touch on these points. So you wanna show how you provided direct services with students. So you wanna show those lessons you taught, how many groups you were leading, how many students you're seeing individually. You wanna show how you support teachers. So this is like, I think someone asked this earlier, should we include this data? Absolutely. So maybe, you know, this is your class lessons, but maybe you're working closely with a teacher to help a student with a behavior plan um, or something like that. Or maybe you're supporting a teacher by giving them tools they can use in their classrooms. So maybe you're doing a teacher education workshop on how to create sensory bins or to set up a calm down corner in the classroom. 
um, how you supported parents. So maybe you're doing parent education workshops or even meetings that you've had with parents to discuss their student progress. You want to include those. And then how you've collaborated with the community at large. So perhaps through community service events that you've helped organize, a career fair, et cetera. And then for communicating your students' progress, you want to touch on these points. So that self-assessment data, and I gave you that five-minute self-assessment earlier, um, a behavior progress monitoring data. So these are forms that parents and teachers can fill out saying how the students' behaviors have changed um, pre-intervention and post-intervention. Then parent-teacher feedback surveys. So just simple surveys, did you feel like the counseling services were effective, scale of one to 10, you know, yes or no questions. And then attendance data. So someone mentioned that as well. Love that. If um, you've helped increase attendance data, that's something you definitely want to improve, include. So tell me, what data are you most proud of this year in your program? Are you most proud of the groups that you've led, the class lessons that you've taught, the trainings you've attended? I'm seeing a lot of number twos. Yeah, a lot of number two, the class lessons. Those are hard, right? You have to plan them and organize and give it all the teachers. Yeah, a lot. I'm seeing a little bit of everything, but I think class lessons taught is a trend here. Well, you should be proud of any of these. Okay, so those are our three points on how to use counseling data. Okay, I'm here again in real time. So I hope you found that recording um, of the live training on how to use an end of the year report helpful. I am so fired up and passionate about this resource. I love it so much. So um, the I may have mentioned in there that the viewers of the live training actually got a free copy of this, uh, but that was like a limited time thing I was doing, but you can still get it uh, for $5 in my TPT store. So I will link to that in the show notes and be on the lookout for future live trainings that I do um, because they almost always include an awesome freebie. Uh, an exclusive thing for viewers. So I'll be having more of these in the future. So be on the lookout for live trainings, but I will link to that end of the year report in the show notes for you. And I would love if you would show me your end of the year report. So some people come up with the most beautiful ones, just awesome graphs and data, or even if yours is just more sleek and professional and simple, I would love to see it. So screenshot or take a picture of your printed out end of the year report and tag me on Instagram at Bright Futures Counseling, and I will be doing a giveaway way for these so be sure to look on my instagram for all the details on the end of the year report giveaway um, i'll be giving out some gift cards of your choice for people who submit pictures of their end of the year report so i cannot wait to see yours there also again i have a stress-free data collection freebie for you so thank you for listening to today's episode about my favorite data collection tool for some more data collection strategies, be sure to download my stress-free data collection toolkit, and I will link to that in the show notes as well. Okay, talk to you guys next time. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.